Knob and tube wiring is an old system that gets its name because the wires are run on porcelain knobs and they're routed through porcelain tubes. The tubes protect the conductors in locations where they're run through structural members. The knob and tube system was a precursor to modern wiring and it consists of only two conductors per circuit. There's no equipment ground that third slot or conductor that's readily apparent on modern receptacles or outlets. Depending on the age of the house, of course, a knob and tube wiring system could date back to the turn of the 20th century. But knob and tube wiring was installed on a widespread basis beginning in the era of flappers, gangsters, and the prohibition years, the roaring 20s. And it remained common up until the 1950s, the era of drive-in restaurants, cruising in cool automobiles, Elvis Presley, and drive-in movie theaters. When there are signs of knob and tube wiring, assume that a house dates back to at least the 1950s. And if it was built prior to 1920, then that knob and tube wiring could have been a major upgrade. An upgrade from what, you might ask? Well, at the turn of the 20th century around the world, gas lights provided illumination at city streets and inside homes. Gas lighting lasted almost 100 years, from 1816 until 1910, but the dawning of the age of electricity was on the horizon. Back in 1879, Thomas Edison had invented the electric light bulb. Edison's light bulb made gas lighting obsolete by 1910, and by 1920, as electric lighting became commonplace, knob and tube wiring was being installed in homes across America. If the inspector's test equipment indicates that there's live or energized knob and tube wiring in the home that you're buying, one potential problem is that some insurance companies will not insure houses with live knob and tube wiring, or if they do underwrite the property, the premiums they charge tend to be high. From the standpoint of safety, the disadvantages of having energized knob and tube wiring are often related not only to the age of the system, but also to how many modifications have been made by people who didn't know what they were doing. Original knob and tube wiring had cloth insulation and soldered and taped connections. Regrettably, over the years, many homeowners have cut into the wiring and added new and often unsafe circuits. Common misadventures include improperly terminating energized but disconnected wiring, leaving open or inadequate wire splices, using undersized or the wrong type of wire, overloading circuits, or creating circuits with reverse polarity. When it's a certainty that energized knob and tube wiring is present, even if it appears to be substantially unaltered from the original installation, it is still a two-conductor system without an equipment ground. Here's another often seen problem. When knob and tube wiring is present, frequently homeowners have removed those original two-slot receptacles and replaced them with new three-slot receptacles. But once again, no equipment ground was ever added to the circuit. So the house ends up having what appear to be three-slot receptacles. But in fact, they supply no equipment ground to a modern plug. That's a safety concern. Bottom line, if the home inspector finds energized knob and tube wiring, it should be further evaluated by a licensed electrician.
Even if the inspector finds that some of the knob and tube wiring has been removed, it's possible that live circuits are still present in hard to access areas. Crawl spaces, attics or inside wall cavities, and energized wiring might even be obscured by insulation. Therefore, it's the recommendation of King of the House Home Inspection that whenever there's any evidence of knob and tube wiring at a home, the system should be reviewed and further evaluated for safety by a licensed electrician. The possible exception being if it can be established for certain that a licensed electrician has previously upgraded the wiring and replaced the knob and tube circuits. Thank you.